you're still watching ways now the world day of war um, offense is observed on January 6th every year to raise awareness about children who have been orphaned due to war. The objective of this day is to voice out the um, predicament of war orphans and highlight the emotional, social, and physical challenges children face while growing up, especially in war-torn um, areas. So we just thought to mention this. Um, most times when I see people trying to fight, to say, oh, let us fight, let us separate. So, so many people don't understand the ripple effect of some of these things. So maybe when you go and study in depth on how it affects the lives of children, even up to when they're adults, nobody will be spewing for war. <laughs> Timmy. Timmy, are you there? I was. Yeah. Yes, I, I think I lost you for a bit, but, but I'm back now. Yeah, all right. So what did you find for us in the news? Okay, so the, my story is about WHO, the World Health Organization, endorsing the Pfizer vaccine, and particularly for Nigeria. And um, I find, found this news to be interesting because there's been a lot of um, conversation about whether the Pfizer COVID vaccine or, or any of the other vaccines, you know, are safe and for example if you go on social media people are talking about side effects whether it is safe whether it is healthy but the world health organization comes out to say that this vaccine is endorsed and it's safe and we, we can go ahead and take it so yes that's the news that i found in but what but um if you were to if you were to um what's it called uh, um analyze why this skepticism is all over the place about vaccines and all of that. What would be your own, uh, what's it called? Do you think it has to do with our religious beliefs or what do you think is the real cause of this um, people being apprehensive about um, taking vaccines? Okay, you, you know, funny enough, there was this, uh, there was this Twitter post I saw today hmm. where people were talking about, you know, bringing these vaccines to Nigeria and you know how that they didn't feel comfortable with it but the thing is i don't i find that it's not just people in nigeria who are a little careful it's new so people it's not just people in nigeria like i'm talking to my friends in the u.s and the uk have you taken the vaccine yet and they're still like you know what let other people first of all take it let's be sure you know so mm. a lot of people even some medical people are uncomfortable with these vaccines even now mm. so how much more people who are just lame and who have no knowledge of medicine and you just hear that it's a new vaccine i think people are usually careful when something new is introduced you know you want to be careful of side effects and all of those things you want to get all the facts right so i, I think that's just why people are just careful because it's new absolutely i think so too all right so my story is actually linked to covid19 as well um the deputy governor of lagos state loses um, his brother. I mean, this is really sad. Our heart goes out to the family. Um, the story says the Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Dr. Hamzat, lost one of his relatives. Um, he is also a medical doctor. Um, he, he reportedly tested positive for COVID-19 before his death. That was what the colleagues said. And guess what really shocked me about this story? He was only 37 years old, right? So even the Nigerian Medical Association, Lagos chapter, has confirmed his death. Um, Harun, I think that's his name, Dr. Harun, um, in a statement that they made available today, they confirmed his death. And um, my, I'm, I'm really, really sad. You know why I'm sad? Because I'm looking at um, this new strain of COVID-19 that is going around the sec this second wave. Um, I was asking, like the person I said, you know, reached out to me. I was asking that person, yeah. Do, I mean, is it like, okay, it is the old people, the people with pre-existing health conditions that it affects, that it attacks, like we knew with the first one. So people like us that didn't have any pre-existing health conditions, we were young and all of that, we were quite safe, right? Mm -hmm. But he was saying that, no, that this new strain is, is, a, is a matter of, and I, will, I mean, I cannot wait to have Dr. Majekodumi because he was saying that if two people are in, in a place, it takes one and leave the other one. So it's not even a function of whether the person has pre-existing health condition i would have really loved if they had you know broken down this medic this um said person that has died the doctor that has died now if they had broken down his medical history for us you know i mean i, I just believe that if you give me clarity 
you know, to say, you know what, maybe he had diabetes or he had something. Maybe to so give you know some, how to take precautions. Yes, maybe to give also, you know, to give some of us some level of peace to understand that, okay, I think it is because of his pre-existing health condition that's made him die. But now, I'm seeing a 37-year-old person. I'm looking at how old am I, you know. So it is actually getting close to home. Unlike before where it was really old people and, you know, the old people were the most vulnerable and people with pre-existing health conditions. So this second strain, this new wave, I don't really understand it. And that's why for me it's a, it's a lot worrisome, you know. The young man, 37, mm -hmm. he's a medical doctor. So if you are saying maybe precautions or whatever, I am sure he would have been the one to have, you know, taken a lot of all those measures, I mean, put them in place, you know, before going about his job. Yeah, I, I understand where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. I just find that sometimes we don't know all of the facts, like you said, that maybe if all of the facts were, were available to us, which we don't have, maybe we'd be able to understand certain things better but i also look forward i mean with you i also look forward to the conversation with the doctor so that he enlightens us much more on this second wave i think that's extremely important is it coming on anytime soon i'm definitely. <laughs> waiting already definitely when we go on the break he'll come but i wanted to just quickly Yay. add. okay I, okay i wanted to just quickly add that the nigerian center for disease control had announced that 8354 new cases of covid19 you know, as a Tuesday. So we should just have that figure out there before our doctor comes in. So we'll go on a very short break. When we return, we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 